In today's series, Tips on Selling Your Home, we're talking about selling your home and buying at the same time. I know those words scare the hippie-jeebies out of you and it would scare the hippie-jeebies out of me too. But let's tackle it one by one. Stay till the end. Every option that I will tell you about today is as important as the first and as the last. And we're starting right now. I know your pain and I know your fear. I've met with homeowners just like yourself. I meet with them on a regular basis and we're having this conversation at every kitchen table. So it is the most fearful thing to do is timing everything and how things will work out. So in today's market with a low inventory, finding a house is pretty much impossible. The competition is fierce. There's very many buyers who are fighting for the same property as you are. And now when you are selling and buying at the same time, especially if the sale of your house very much depends on whether or not you'll be able to purchase your new home is 10 times worse. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not here to make things pretty and tell you stories. I'm here to tell you the facts so that when you are ready and making decisions, you are very well informed and educated before making your plans ahead of time, okay? By the way, if this is something that you're interested in, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Okay, so the first option that's available to you, which is the best option, that would be selling your house first, getting the money from that house, and then purchasing a new one. Problem is where you're gonna live after you sell the house. So the easiest, the most favorable one would be if you can move in with family members or short-term rent until you find a house. So think about somewhere along the lines of maybe a one month to find a house, another two to three months to close on the house. That would be your best option. There's no strings attached, no contingencies of any kind of sale. Option number two would be putting your house on the market and putting it out there right away that the sale of your house is contingent upon you buying your new house. Where are the obstacles with that? The obstacles are sometimes there are certain buyers who need to move in a certain date because maybe they have to vacate a property. Just for example, like we just closed on a property for a client of mine who was renting the house and then the landlord decided that they want to move family member into the property and my clients needed to move in by a specific date because they had to vacate on a specific day. That's gonna eliminate a few of these buyers that might be really good buyers, potential buyers to buy your house. What else? There might be the interest rates right now. Everybody wants to speed up their closing because every week or so that the closing is being delayed, they feel that they are very much pressured because the interest rate changes so much. So they want to be able to lock their rate and close on time because their monthly payment is important to them. So that might be something to consider when you're thinking about it. But in today's market, this is June of 2022. We still have a large demand for inventory and really not enough homes on the market to supply. If you're gonna think about it, let's say, what are we really losing here? Are these buyers that we might potentially be losing because we're marketing it this way? Is it going to hurt the sale? As of today, as we stand today, probably not. But this will now become a contingency when you are going to buy your new house. And now when these sellers, it is the hot sellers market and sellers get multiple offers from different kinds of buyers. And a lot of these buyers are buyers who are ready to close any times. They don't have any sale contingencies on their end. So your chances of securing a offer on a house that you want to buy while you are still 
in process of being in contract on the sale of your current home that you live in may put you in a back burner position. So you're not going to be their first choice to pick you as the purchaser. They may put you in second position or third position. The other option that you can entertain or think about is selling the house and arranging with the buyer that's purchased your home is to close on it and then you rent the house back from them. Is it an ideal situation? It might be for you. You don't have a move out. You don't have to relocate temporarily. You might not like the idea that now you're going to have to pay market value rents to the new owner while you're still living in the house and also paying the real estate taxes, any maintenance, utilities, water and such. And you might need to pay more than a market rent value these days because you might need to pay their mortgage payment in order to stay in the house. So these are the kind of things that I speak about with my clients when we're making a decision of how to go about it. For instance, I'm in the middle of negotiating an offer right now where I have the situation with my client. They need the proceeds from their current home in order to purchase the next home and they don't have that much cash available to put as an escrow deposit so that's also one of the things that a when you present an offer on the purchase that seller is going to be looking at how much money do you have to put an escrow account and how much skin you have in the game so what we're doing is we are selling it with transparency, telling everybody that we need time to find the house before we can close. Luckily, we found a buyer who's willing to give us 90 days. And of course, if we find the house sooner than that, then we'll be happy to just close sooner and get things going. So these are the kind of things that are a very scary to you my friends i know that and unfortunately when your funds are tied up in your current property and you need those funds to be available in order to close on the next one now if we're lucky enough to buy our next home while we're still in contract on the current home that we live in and selling. Of course, we're making everything contingent upon. So if one thing falls apart by default, your purchase falls apart. And we are then working very close myself with my supporting team, which is the attorney and the title company and the mortgage broker, is that we want to schedule one closing and then the next one right after. So for example, that would be Let's say we'll close on our current home in the morning and then get the fund and then we will close on our purchase in the afternoon and then pay for the purchase and then or we do it, we'll close on our home that we're selling today and then we'll close on the new home tomorrow. So that's really the whole nuts and bolts of this whole process and please, if this sounds a little bit hectic and if it sounds a little bit confusing, yeah, it definitely could be. But rest assured that when you have a great team, a supporting team that's handling the entire sale and purchase transaction for you, like your realtor, an attorney, title company and mortgage broker have the team working together because having a great team on your side is key to getting you a successful transaction where all the team members uh, like your realtor the mortgage broker the title company and the attorney are all working in the same team that they, they have very good communication they understand each other uh, they know what to do they know how to get you to the next level with flawlessly as humanly possible in a real estate transaction. Like I said, it could be very stressful to you. I just wanna let you know if you have a good support system and good team behind you, let, leave this stress to us to handle. 
as we do this on a regular basis and we can get you there. So like this video, comment, ask a question, subscribe to this channel. I love helping you navigate the home selling process. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.